A stranger says, uh, he quotes Mark 10, 18. Jesus said, why do you call me good? Uh, that, well, uh, so he says, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. So clearly, Jesus is saying, the only one who is good is God, and he's not good, so he's not God. So that is a, a common objection that comes up. What do you think? Right, right. Well, the first thing we have to, to ask the question is, what is the context? Again, it's the rich young ruler coming to Jesus. Uh, he's patronizing Jesus, you know, good teacher, good master. What must I do to attain eternal life? And Jesus uh, retorts and says, well, uh, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. Well, the first thing we need to ask is, does that mean Jesus isn't good? Well, I've heard a lot of Muslims talk about Jesus was a good prophet. Uh, he was a one of Allah's greatest prophets. Um, if that was the case, if that is to be taken in a woodenly, uh, wooden sense, David, mm -hmm. then why would Jesus refer to himself as the good shepherd, mm -hmm. uh, etc.? He would not even use that of himself. So there's something else going on here. You wanted to add something, David? Oh, I was I was just going to point out exactly what what you were, what you said that Jesus is the good shepherd. So Jesus believes that he's good. Right. He does believe he's good. So right, yeah, right. So so what is he doing then? Well, let's look at the context. This young guy comes to him. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, "Okay, why do you call me good? Do you understand in calling me good? You are calling me God. Essentially, that's what he's saying. Do you understand the ramifications of what you're saying? Now, now you got to follow the story closely. He then goes on to say, "Well, have you kept the commandments?" Uh, and he says, well, which ones? Don't lie, don't don't steal, et cetera, et cetera. He, Jesus quotes the Decalogue. And then this young guy has the arrogance to say, I've kept all of these since my youth. Basically, I've never broken any of the, of the commandments, which we all know. The reader knows that this guy is just arrogant and full of himself. So what does Jesus do? Jesus prods him further and says, well, if you want to be perfect, uh, I want you to sell everything you have and come and follow me. And then it says he was very displeased because he had many riches and he walked away. Now, notice very carefully, David, what does this show us? Jesus knew his heart. He knew that this young man, even though he claimed to kept all the commandments, in fact, broke the very first commandment of the Decalogue. The first commandment says, you shall have no other gods before me. And Jesus demonstrated that this guy was an idolater who worshipped money. And that's why Jesus says you cannot serve two masters. You can serve God and money. So the implication there is this. Jesus hit right to his soul by showing him that he was a violator of the number one commandment of the Decalogue. He worshipped money as his God. How would Jesus have known that? Well, again, there is, there is this irony that's going on there. Do you realize in calling me good, you're calling me God? Now, did Mark believe Jesus was deity? Absolutely. We see that right at the beginning uh, at his baptism, uh, where Mark quotes from Malachi and Isaiah. Uh, the Lord says, I'm going to send my messenger before my face, and he shall prepare the way before me. That's God speaking through Malachi and Isaiah. And yet John is preparing the way for Jesus. And then in Mark 14, at his trial, Jesus stands before the, the high priest, and the high priest puts him under oath and says, Are you the son of the blessed one are you the Christ the Messiah and Jesus says I am and you shall see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven and then it says the high priest stood up and he tore his clothes and he said you have heard his blasphemy well what's the blasphemy well the blasphemy there is that there's nothing blasphemous David about claiming to be the Messiah because there was a lot of messianic mm -hmm. contender there's nothing missing nothing blasphemous of saying hey I'm the Messiah what is blasphemous, however, is to say that you're the son of the blessed and to say that you're the heavenly son of man who is actually a divine figure in Daniel 7 who comes with the clouds of heaven. Every figure in the Bible that is described as coming with the clouds of heaven is they're all references to Yahweh who rides the clouds. And then there's this figure called the son of man who is associated with an Ancient of Days, another figure called the Ancient of Days. There's that plurality again, David. Mm -hmm. The Ancient of Days, and you've got a figure called the Son of Man, and this Son of Man comes with the clouds of heaven, meaning he's a divine person, and he judges the world, and then it says all the nations will worship him. He's an object of worship. So when they're doing the same thing they did with Hebrews 5-7. They're looking at one verse, telescopic vision, tunnel vision. They're ignoring the rest of Mark. When if you read the rest of Mark, you will realize that Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man. Mm -hmm. So this is why 
context is so important. Yeah, so uh, a stranger, you should read Jesus' words in the light of everything else that he says. Uh, notice, uh, it, it kind of reminds me of, um, it's the same thing Muslims do with, with a passage like, uh, you know, uh, again, we were talking about earlier the, the Shema, um, that, that God is one. And then they'll say, oh, God is one, and then they'll, they'll, uh, they'll give it an Islamic meaning or doing it with the Quran, right? They'll, they'll take a pet, they'll take a passage that says, um, no bearer of burden shall bear the burden of another. But then when they tell you what that said, they'll say, oh, it said no one can bear the burden of another. That's not what it said, right? Right. Just like here, people will go to this and say, ah, Jesus said, why do you call me good? So you see that Jesus is saying he's not good. That wouldn't make any sense given everything no. Jesus said. Right. He doesn't, he does he, Jesus doesn't say I'm not good. He says, why? Right. Do you call me exactly good? Exactly right. Why? Exactly right. It's a question. Why do you call me good? Exactly right. Um, not a denial of his own goodness, or he'd be no. contradicting himself. That's right. 